The perfect trap is one where the trapped entity doesn't even realize that it is trapped. The perfect deception is the one which apparently gives the deceived what he was looking for. After we have shown in one of our previous presentations of the series, part 8, how mass can be created by additional, potentially compactified dimensions, we will here show how this concept can be applied in an optimization of deception techniques. The strategy we are going to discuss here will be the end trap strategy. It requires an understanding of the psychological process of the so-called mess formation. With respect to the theory behind mass formation processes and mass formation psychosis, we refer to the book of Professor Matthias Desmet about the psychology of totalitarianism or our presentation part 9 of the series for very brief description. In here we want to concentrate on the math necessary for the construction of the perfect trap and thus regarding the psychological aspects we are only going to give a very brief overview. In difference to ordinary trap strategies where the trapped individual sooner or later realizes its predicament, the perfect trap does not reveal its existence to the victim. Such a process requires four conditions. The victim must have a deep desire for something special, something the trap creator possesses or even only pretends to possess. The trap apparently provides this speciality. The trap creates free-floating excitement via a presentation of the speciality in a multitude of options and varieties. And finally, the trap also creates a free-floating satisfaction with in itself pointless, but nevertheless addictive endorphin intoxications. Having achieved this, more input from the general receipt of mass formation could be added in due course in order to make the victim ripe for hypnosis. The goal should be to turn the victim into a well-trained Pavlov dog in order to reverse the process of information flow towards the trap creator without the victim realizing this reversal. As most of the material necessary for such a process has already been presented in our previous videos, we will not go into detail here, but just hint that one only needs to substitute the free-floating field or fear and anxiety from our last presentation by suitable other attribute fields, which are depending on the seeker's desires and other circumstances of the situation. This way, a gradual redesign of the seeker and its entourage can be achieved without revealing anything of severe substance. People become accessible. By the way, when trying to understand this process, some experts resort to classical game theory. However, the desired explicit creation of irrationality automatically excludes mathematical approaches like Nash's game theory, where all agents are assumed to act completely rationally. In this presentation, we will now aim for an effective mathematical quantum gravity description of the process described above. It is widely assumed that Einstein's general theory of relativity cannot be combined with quantum theory. At least, so far, nobody has found a truly conclusive way. That being said, we have shown in our previous presentations that the job was in principle already done by no other than the German mathematician David Hilbert. There is no need to combine quantum theory and general theory of relativity because the latter already contains the first and mass creation is possible via the entanglement with additional dimensions. For this, we refer to part 8 of our little series or the references given below. A theory of everything, for which we are aiming here, should not only contain Einstein's general theory of relativity, 
but also all major quantum equations, and it should also explain the appearance of what we describe as matter. Only as an example, we here show the metric result of the Klein-Gordon equation, which we obtained by applying the Hilbert formalism from a scaled metric tensor, see part 2, 8 and 11 of our series, and in comparison with a classical equivalent. We here also pick the Klein-Gordon equation because this path allows for the simplest mathematical handling of the end trap strategy. Yes, some may say, why the math? With the approach laid out above, we can just work the necessary psychology by hand. Well, we wish them good luck in this socio-economic and psychological spacetime of unlimited dimensionality, endless numbers of attributes and non-linearities. The important aspect for our goal of a mathematical description of the process of perfect trap creation, evolution more like, as we require a permanent refinement of strategy in due course, requires the understanding and falsifiable presentation of dimensional mass creation and its entanglement with the individual fields of all agents or players in a socio-economic space-time. In part 8 of this series, we concentrated on the metric derivation of the Klein-Gordon equation and mass as one of the essential parameters in this very equation. From there, it is simple to also extract the metric appearance of mass for Dirac, part 3 of the series, Schrödinger, part 4, and any other quantum equations also for arbitrarily big systems. For a start, we could have a simple model which does not aim for a perfect mirroring of a source trap spy system because this requires supercomputers, but only for the illustration of the method on a small scale. In such an approach, the individuality is being illustrated as wave functions, which actually it is anyway. The more dynamic, healthy and active the individual is, the more complex the multidimensional orbital appearance of the individual space-time wave density. It is also important to note that the individuality requires the wave function to be fermionic, which means it follows the Pauli exclusion principle and wants to keep its own individuality. There is nothing artificial about this picture, because all our individuality summed up is just a huge set of partially entangled attributes, and each attribute contributes to the complexity and appearance of the individual's very own halo, some call it psi field, in the space-time of a given system, here the system of one society and its enemy. While in a mass formation psychosis, these individual fields need to be squashed, distorted, made less complex, made less fermionic, thus bosonic then, in order to switch off the Pauli principle and make the individual compliant and ready for compactification, in other words, we need a process of de-individualization, the trap strategy does not aim for such a degeneration process, but intends to keep the victim awake and healthy. For this, we require an attractor of such character that the source of the attracting field can never be truly made out by the attracted individual. This is similar to the fields being applied in mass formation processes, but not equal. The key is the creation of entanglement, which classically one may call the bait, but in a sense we come not even close to the classical picture with our approach here. We might go so far to say that the seeker himself already carries the bait. We only need to make him take it out and swallow it. As we already saw that the process of creation of inertia, mass, is the fundament for both the practical process and the model, we are going to discuss this here in more detail. After all, this aspect is essential for the understanding of the process of trap creation and evolution, 
and thus also foreseeing possibilities to intermediate changes and optimizations. As this process is somehow the key, we have to endure a bit more math in here. Our starting point is the so-called Einstein-Hilbert action, a variational integral based on a Hamilton extremal principle. Already in 1915, it was the great German mathematician David Hilbert who derived Einstein's field equations from such a fundamental minimum principle. What Hilbert apparently did not see was that his formula in fact contained much more than just the Einstein field equations, but that he had also found the fundament for quantum theory. As we have already shown in part one of our presentation series, that we do not need the matter term Lm, nor a cosmological constant to obtain matter, we set both lambda and Lm equal to zero and just proceed with the curvature of space-time, known as the Ricci scalar, as the kernel within our variation. Now, by following Hilbert's classical derivation, we obtain the so-called vacuum Einstein field equations. Things change, however, in a rather interesting manner when introducing a slightly adapted metric tensor with a scaling factor as shown here. Hilbert's calculus then yields a much more complex kernel. This kernel can dramatically be simplified by demanding the scaling function to fulfill a special condition. Now we split up the variated contravariant metric tensor into its scaling and its tensor part as shown here. As a result, we obtain two equations, a scalar and a tensor one. In this presentation, we ignore the tensor equation, for example by simply assuming that the variation of the metric tensor gives zero or is so small that we can assume it to vanish against the scalar part. Then we intend to fulfill the scalar, which is to say the first equation, by demanding the kernel of the integral to be equal to zero. This gives us a very simple partial differential equation and by inserting our setting for the scaling function f, we clearly recognize the similarity to the Klein-Gordon equation. Now we have two options to incorporate mass. In part two of this series, we have already shown the possibility of finding this term within the Ricci curvature R. Thereby we assumed a Minkowski-like spacetime and split up the Laplace operator into its time derivative and its spatial part. Another, and for our purposes here, much more important possibility to obtain masses, requires the introduction of higher dimensions. Here is just one example in a spacetime with six dimensions. The two additional dimensions shall be u and v, whereby the two are entangled with each other via a coupling function g of v, as shown here. When mirroring our reality, the additional dimensions are describing the free-floating bait or initial trap field which couples into or entangles with the wave functions of the individuals one intends to catch and who are living inside their own real socio-economic space-time. Here in this simple illustration, the coupling has been realized via the general function f. By giving the bait or trap function a certain shape, and assuming a completely flat space-time with r equals zero, the Hilbert formalism provides us with a perfect Klein-Gordon quantum equation with mass. Investigation of the function g of v shows us that this function is of bell-like shape and can be arbitrarily compactified. This means that the additional dimensions might not be realized as dimensions but only occur to the seeker or spy as masses of attractive character. In other words, the field of the trap does not even have to become observable or manifest as such in order to a. still fully affect all aspects of life of the victim and b. still realize the mass creation and subsequent mass attraction by the means 
of the trapping process described above. Thus, with a the theoretical model given here, we already could even make out potentials for a dramatic improvement of the classical trap creation and deception formation via an optimization of the scalar appearance of the free-floating bait fields in order to maximal hide it, but still maintain its effect. Only for completeness, we also show the resulting klein gordon quantum equation, which, as we have shown above, was completely derived in a metric and thus quantum gravity concept. Thus, we have the possibility to find mass and potential interaction plus other inertia, either via additional dimensions or within the Ricci curvature when deriving quantum equations from the Einstein-Hilbert action via the classical Hilbert calculus as shown here. With respect to our application, namely the effective description of the process of attractor creation for our end trap strategy, the approach shown here comes with something else, something many simulators and experts like to ignore, and it has to do with the principal uncertainty of everything, the model the data we use as input, and the reality, respectively, what we realize as reality, and the foreseeable reaction of the victim. By following the rigorous mathematical approach of the quantized metrical description, we always know about the uncertainties in the model, and thus also in the real world, which the model mirrors. Thus, we could avoid this silly discussion about the uncertainty limitations of the calculus by clearly pointing the total uncertainty budget residing in the model out, always and in the most holistic manner there can be. In order to obtain good metric equivalence to psychological problems like the end trap strategy, we have already developed models with 10 individual attributes dimensions, and more for each internal agent. The interested reader may find more information in the books shown here or other publications of this author. We explicitly want to point out, however, that we do not consider us the first to have found such connections. In principle, namely, it was already all inside Hilbert's ingenious approach and he only could not see it because a. At the time he wrote down his equation, the fundamental equation of quantum theory were not yet discovered. b. His main goal was the derivation of the Einstein field equations, and thus, as Einstein had not bothered about also finding quantum equations inside his general theory of relativity, Hilbert, as a mathematician, obviously saw no need to consider the broader spectrum residing in his approach, and c. The connection of psychology and quantum theory was not known in 1915. It has been laid out by Young and Pauli many decades after Hilbert's publication. These new insights open up a variety of possibilities for the most astounding developments, be it inexhaustible sources of energy, future weaponry, metric artificial intelligence, quantum gravity computing, or completely new and what is much more important, truly unbiased and most holistic modeling tools for almost all sorts of problems. And how could such developments be realized? Well, the optimum is the global approach aiming for a quantum gravity computer and naturalized AI, which is a Manhattan-sized project. How this disrupts everything and makes the owner the global monopoly to just everything can be extracted from the material presented in this talk. A next smaller step is just naturalized AI, which still is a small Manhattan project. This too already reaches very far and propels the owner into a global, monopolistic and long-term leading position, unless somebody achieves a takeover via a working quantum gravity computer tech. Everything else are service projects. A word at the end. There will be those who consider the path laid out here too complex or too heavy on math. 
For this we have one answer. That is why the enemy will not be able to see the trap until he is in there.